and a warm welcome. You're joining us tonight at Hyde Park on Other Dharana 24. And uh, we've decided to talk about Sri Lanka's capital market challenges and the opportunities ahead for investors and especially foreign investors and how we attract foreign investors going forward. Um, to discuss all this, we've invited to our studios the Chairman of Securities and Exchange Commission, Viraj Dayaratna. A very warm welcome to you. Mm -hmm. And we also do have with us the Chairman of the Columbus Stock Exchange, Dilshan Virasekara. You. Warm welcome to you as well. Um, we're talking about Sri Lanka's capital market facing challenges, but at the same time, Sri Lanka as a nation, we have been in this economic crisis and looking at ways out. Um, to address critical needs, Sri Lanka should find more foreign um, investors to come in so that those um, that, that money flows into the country. And um, we'd also like to talk about market infrastructure in order to attract these foreign investors. Um, so let's start off there. Uh, I'd like your comments um, on what plans the Securities and Exchange Commission together with the Columbus Stock Exchange has to address Sri Lanka's broader question. Yeah, uh, so in the very, uh, to begin with, uh, the past few months, the, the last three to four months, has seen a net, net foreign inflow. So we are particularly happy about that, notwithstanding the current economic uh, situation in the country. The foreign investors have had faith in our markets and uh, they are coming back. So that's a good sign. I think it's after about um, three or four years that we are having a net foreign inflow. Uh, so I think it's an it's ideal time for them to come in because with the rupee depreciation, I think uh, it's cheap for them to um, buy our shares. So that's a good sign and uh, that shows the faith the foreign investors have. But so as far as uh, doing, uh, uh, do, doing uh, uh, taking steps rather to attract foreign investment, uh, well, there's a lot to be done. Uh, unfortunately, the last couple of years didn't permit us to do much because of the pandemic and then the travel restrictions and so on. And the, uh, however, notwithstanding those impediments, we've, we've done two road shows together with the Columbus Stock Exchange, one in Dubai, uh, where there was a very positive response. Mm -hmm. Then uh, one in London in March, unfortunately, the, uh, with the discussions we had with the would-be investors, the, the community, Sri Lankan community living there, as well as uh, the fund representatives from funds, the response was very positive, but unfortunately, the events that uh, took place thereafter uh, didn't, uh, didn't result in the expected um, the response mm -hmm. that we expected. So there is, um, we need to uh, market uh, the Sri Lankan capital market to uh, foreigners. And in that regard, uh, in the very actually, the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission spearheaded a drive together with um, foreign, our foreign missions, where we um, uh, educated them on uh, our markets, what uh, potential is there for foreign investors. And what we wanted was, since there were travel restrictions where we could, uh, where the stock exchange and the SEC could not go over to those countries, we expected the foreign missions to take over that task in a limited way, where they could on their own uh, reach out to the would-be investors. So that is something that we are continuing with. But has, has this uh, proven uh, successful so Yeah, far? so it uh, it's took off uh, in the very, but unfortunately, I think the time was also not very conducive for mm -hmm. them to market. Uh, Sri Lanka. So it has taken somewhat of a backseat, but we wish to take right. that forward in the future. Right. And from the Colombo Stock Exchange side, we're talking about improving infrastructure. So what, what plans are ahead towards this? Um, so we've already, I think, embarked upon quite a few initiatives in the very, I think the first was the DVP system that was introduced uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, the biggest project right now that we have at hand uh, is looking at the CCP, the Central Counterparty Settlement System, that will bring the Columbus Stock Exchange on par with other uh, worldwide or regional exchanges and eliminating to a great extent that settlement risk that we currently have. Now, this is a big need for foreign investment mm -hmm. flows coming in. Um, even though we've uh, run a successful market without a settlement failure over the last so many years, uh, I think it's important to have that infrastructure in place. So that's being done. Um, we've also looked at upgrading our order management systems and our broker back office systems uh, currently in process. I must thank the chairman of the SEC also who took the initiative to uh, set up um, joint committees 
of the SEC and CSC, which has been a, a turning point for me really in terms of getting these initiatives action and executing these plans. Uh, because then you have the regulator in conjunction with the market operator, uh, who essentially then gets the legal framework, the regulations, all of those in place to enable that change to happen. Um, so we, we've done that, but um, let me also touch a little bit about uh, the macroeconomic perspective and the outlook, because I think there's so much an exchange or a regulator can do uh, if you have macroeconomic issues, and that's what really happened to Sri Lanka. So I think we all know we went through this crisis. Uh, we hit sort of rock bottom maybe in April, May, when we defaulted on our currencies. Uh, but since then, uh, it is commendable that we've taken uh, fairly significant reform steps mm -hmm. from depreciating the currency to in increasing exchange, uh, interest rates uh, to pricing commodities appropriately and finally very recently signing a staff level agreement with the IMF uh, with further reforms now in, in place. So I think that confidence that we are now in a path to reform has trickled down to the capital markets as well and as a result like um, uh, the chairman SEC said, for the first time in four years since 2017, we have a net inflow to market from both fronts. You have a primary market, you have a secondary market. So we have a primary mar mar market surplus as well as a secondary market inflow, mm -hmm. uh, totaling to almost 30 billion rupees for the year. Just to give you context, we had close to 50 billion of outflows for the last two years in 21 and 20. Um, so I think uh, with all these steps to do with the infrastructure, digitalization, that uh, we hope uh, we'll see more foreign investors coming into the CSC. Uh, when we talk about bringing the Colombo Stock Exchange and Sri Lanka's markets on par with uh, regional investors in uh, markets, we're also talking about the regulatory framework here. How attractive is it? Is it safe here in Sri Lanka for global investors, although we do uh, extend invitations to them? So from the SEC side, as chairman uh, of the market regulator, uh, what measures are we taking going forward? Um, other than the uh, stock market act that was uh, brought in last year, and uh, how far are the enforcements and what is the progress there? Yeah, uh, so in the very, uh, with the coming into force of the new law, the regulatory regime was further strengthened. Mm -hmm. I think that was a significant step towards um, ensuring and sending the message that this is a safe market to come and invest in. So we have uh, several regulatory measures uh, that were introduced and uh, we have made use of them. And let me tell you, um, the, as a regulator, we have not waited for, we have not allowed things to happen and waited to take action once something happened. We have a, a real-time surveillance uh, system and whenever they had some suspicion of untoward activity taking place, we've taken the step of speaking to them, th those who, have, who we felt were on the verge of maybe committing an offense. Uh, we've spoken to them and told you, look here, please stop, this is not permitted, uh, you can't uh, proceed in this manner. That has had a tremendous impact, although uh, many would not know that we have been taking that step. That has minimized the commission of offenses in the very, if you take uh, during the last two, two, two and a half years, the surveillance referrals that our surveillance division and the surveillance division of the uh, stock exchange generated have come down. So I think that has had a uh, very uh, drastic impact. And, and the other measures that we have taken, we have uh, expedited the conclusion of um, investigations that have been uh, going on. Of course, most of these investigations were in respect of uh, offences or suspected offences that had committed long years ago. Mm -hmm. We have concluded many. Unfortunately, it's not easy. It's not an easy task, but that's no excuse. We need to uh, get on with the uh, investigations and conclude them. We have done that. And we have taken uh, a fair amount of enforcement action in the recent past. And we have set deadlines for ourselves to complete the investigations that are pending. And I'm hopeful before the end of the year, we will conclude a ma majority of the investigations, if not all. And uh, so that, that gives confidence. As you know, you need confidence that the perception that one has about a market is matters uh, a lot in the very. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to create that perception amongst uh, would-be investors not only for foreigners, even for locals. So as uh, the chairman of the CSC said, having proper infrastructure, 
uh, because if uh, particularly foreign funds, if, were to, if they were to invest uh, in our market, they have a tick box. So they will, they will uh, look, uh, look at our market uh, uh, and see whether uh, the, what they look for is in fact there. So uh, Dilshan mentioned about uh, in the DVP implementation, the digitalization, where uh, there is ease of opening an account and trading. Now we are in the process of uh, moving into a, uh, having a CCP in place. So the, those infrastructure uh, developments, together with the confidence, uh, the, the environment that we have created with regard to um, uh, the confidence that, that is much needed, I think uh, we have uh, set the necessary atmosphere. Before we look ahead, you mentioned about uh, suspicious activities, offenses that may be uh, committed, and the SEC has always been proactive in uh, mitigating these acts. But where is this coming from? We're talking about investors, large-scale investors to uh, small-scale investors. So where is all this coming from? Yeah, and so is, there, is there really room in the system? No, there is always room uh, in the very, it can, it can come, uh, the, these uh, can be committed by uh, investors, maybe the, maybe the market intermediaries. So it can happen uh, through different participants. We have different mar market participants. So any one of them can uh, commit these malpractices or offenses. So but we, we, as I said, with the proactive uh, uh, approach that we have adopted, we have minimized uh, the commission of any offenses or, or malpractices. And uh, let, I'm happy to say uh, there was a lot of um, social media activity that was taking place, which was uh, really detrimental to the market. Mm -hmm. uh, the information that was wrong information that was being disseminated. And I ha I'm happy to say after the, com after the new act was brought in, we had a new um, uh, mechanism called uh, administrative sanctions, where we could slap an administrative sanction on wrongdoers, not the, not the uh, major offenses. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, last week, the commission decided to uh, impose an administrative sanction on a market um, a participant, mm -hmm. a market intermediary, to uh, impose a penalty, as well as uh, with regard to one of, the, um, uh, one of those who work for the market participant, where we have, uh, uh, we have imposed a uh, sanction against him. So, so these are little by little. So far, how many have been really? Yeah. Uh, so, so, as far as administrative sanctions are concerned, now that can be imposed on on offenders uh, after the new act came into being. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, yes. make use of that provision to punish uh, those who have committed uh, any offence uh, prior to the new act coming into force. So, we have just started. That's why I said the the first uh, such action was taken. Uh, the, the commission decided on that at the last commission meeting. So, so we are working hard. And um, we have seen a decline in, in some of these activity. I think uh, they are again due to the proactive steps that we take at an early stage. And also I think uh, once we take these steps, it will act as a deterrent. Right. Uh, we spoke at the beginning uh, about investor, uh, foreign investor inflows after an outflow of some f over 50 billion rupees last year. For the first time in four years, uh, Sri Lanka's stock exchange season inflow and in September alone uh, over 9.4 billion. Where do you expect to conclude the year and where do you expect these indi indicators to go by the end of the year? So I think um, I, I think uh, I'm hopeful that the foreign investment will continue to trickle in. Uh, I can't give you a number in the very to forecast what that number would be at the year end. But I think if the macro conditions remain stable, uh, and if we are able to sign a board level agreement, which is the next key step uh, in the process, uh, that that will add to confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, because from a foreign perspective, you have to look at uh, someone coming in is getting 80% uh, higher uh, rate on their rupees coming into it on a already price adjusted market. So if you look at our valuations, we are trading at about five and a half times on our price earnings, trailing price earnings, maybe a little over one time in book value. And if you just compare that to regional markets, you would find that regional markets are trading at more than double those valuations. You know, maybe two times book, maybe 17 to 18 times price earnings. So I think uh, foreigners, as long as they have confidence in the macro aspects, and stability will definitely pick up shares because they are bargains right now. So I'm hopeful that the foreign investment would continue throughout the year and that we would record probably one of the highest numbers we've had in recent history. Mm -hmm. um, 
the digitalization process we saw in Aug uh, August, somewhere in August that uh, uh, you completed the third phase of it, but uh, this is a market set up somewhere in 1985. So how are we looking at uh, making it more attractive to foreign investors going forward, apart from ensuring that the re regulatory framework is tight and that we ensure that there is a safer um, trading platform? Um, what new financial instruments are you also thinking of? Yeah, so that's uh, that's been a big hindrance in the way I do concede. I think we've been a, a, a dual product market for far, far too long. So we have plain vanilla equity and we have some listed debt. Uh, and those are really essentially the only instruments that are traded. Uh, we've uh, looked at uh, introducing new products. So we've got uh, the legislature for REITs in place. Uh, unfortunately, the current interest rate environment isn't as conducive to launch REITs out. Mm -hmm. So we've not had any uh, arranger come or a manager come and launch a REIT yet, but technically we, it is possible to get REITs out. Uh, we are looking at short selling uh, as, a, uh, as a quick new product because we feel otherwise the market is always one-sided. Mm -hmm. This allows a hedge for investors. It also allows um, uh, foreigners to maybe take uh, bets on the other side of the fence uh, in terms of equity positions. Uh, we are looking at mo mortgage-backed securities, which we feel uh, uh, you have a securitized or collateralized sort of uh, debt instruments that listed, which will also make the banking sector more efficient in terms of being able to churn capital around mm -hmm. faster. Um, uh, and we are also looking at maybe certain other commodity base products getting listed. A gold back product is a, a fairly easy win, uh, easily structured product that we can introduce. Uh, so we've sort of uh, conceptualized a lot of these new products. Uh, we are currently in discussion with the regulator in terms of amending the rules that are required to bring these products out, as well as thereafter creating awareness amongst investors and the public uh, so that they actually come and uh, trade these products. When, the wh what is the timeline uh, that you're thinking uh, so of? So we are looking at a fairly short line, timeline. I think by about mid of 2023, we hope to have uh, most of these instruments that I just spoke of mm -hmm. uh, coming onto the market in some form. Mm -hmm. And how open? Just to, sorry, just to yes. add to that, uh, in the very to add, just to add mm -hmm. to what um, the chairman of the CSC said, now um, uh, the gold back products is something that um, the SEC has granted in principle approval, and I think uh, that. The legal the, the uh, CSC is preparing the legal regime as far as gold back products is concerned. Then uh, we have uh, also uh, facilitated repurchase agreements on uh, corporate debt securities. There again, we have uh, approved the initial uh, legal framework. Then, uh, with regard to uh, bonds, both both uh, green bonds as well as the introduction of. Uh, Blue bonds, in principle, approval has been granted by the uh, by the SEC. Then one other in interesting uh, development will be uh, the approval be granted for the introduction of uh, is Islamic capital market products. Right. right. So there are a lot of uh, new products uh, which will come in. We have given the in principle approval, and the CSC actually is working on the legal framework. So uh, some of them we have, I think, um, they they are nearing completion. Uh, Dilshan, if I'm correct. Yeah. And uh, once the legal framework is in place, mm -hmm. we are ready to introduce them. Uh, you're, you're a president's counsel yourself. You have your legal background. So in, en in ensuring, again, that, that tight regulatory framework and uh, the CSC chairman talks about new uh, legal measures and amendments to the uh, act that is uh, expected to bring in and introduce these, um, these financial instruments. So how aggressively are, is the SEC looking at this? Yeah, so whenever uh, these have been proposed, uh, actually we have got support from uh, the Asian Development Bank as well mm -hmm. uh, for the, some of these initiatives. And uh, once the framework, the basic framework has been prepared, we have been very quick to approve them. Uh, so it's, it's just the legal framework that needs to be done. So we need to uh, ensure uh, in investor protection also uh, now there is um, uh, crowdfunding also that can come in to, to a, as an additional uh, um, mechanism of raising funds. So, so these are uh, these are new products and, and the infrastructure that will be introduced. Or I mean, crowdfunding through the and uh, through the OT, OTC um, platform. So uh, all that is being prepared. 
uh, and very soon uh, we will uh, see some of these products coming in. Uh, you mentioned to protect investors. So how uh, and what new measures have been taken uh, in this regard, especially after the introduction of the new legal framework? Yes. So uh, in the very, I think uh, one concern, uh, not many, but very few uh, had at the time the act was uh, passed, mm -hmm. was that uh, administration of the act, the, the, the legal provisions would be a Herculean task. But I, I, at that time, I said, no, we will ensure that everything is in place for, for the act to be properly administered. And we have kept that promise. Uh, we have um, uh, prepared rules for all market intermediaries. They were published in February of this year. We have uh, prepared market uh, the rules in respect of the three market institutions. That was published in uh, May of this year in the Gazette. Then uh, we have prepared um, uh, the guidelines for supplementary service providers, which was a new category of uh, service providers that was uh, brought in mm -hmm. by the new law. Uh, those guidelines are now published on our website. Then uh, the, the three market institutions, uh, one of which is the exchange, they had to, under the new law, they had to have their own rules, uh, which had to be approved by the SEC. Those rules have been prepared by the three institutions and we have approved them. Uh, now uh, the listing rules, which is uh, a very important uh, piece of, um, uh, it's not legislation, but uh, subsidiary legislation, I would say, uh, that is being completely revamped. Uh, of course, the CSC took a little time because they wanted to ensure that all aspects were looked into. That has been uh, brought to us now. We've had uh, two rounds of discussions with them and uh, probably with a third round of discussions we can finalize that and approve that will be a huge change because uh, the listing framework and the continuous listing um, uh, requirements mm -hmm. uh, are very important for the market to function properly uh, and and one other set of rules that have been finalized are the uh, trading participant rules uh, now that again the csc has uh, drafted and it is with us at the moment we've again discussed that with them and hopefully, um, with another round of discussions, we, sh we should be able to finalize them. So the, the entire set of rules that were required under the Act, uh, in the very, I'm happy to say, it's just one year since the new Act was uh, brought in. Mm -hmm. It was brought in in September of last year. So all those rules are now in place. Then uh, one other thing I forgot to say, the collective investment scheme. It was a huge task to finalize a scheme of that nature, which will govern all funds and schemes that will be set up. There can be several new types of funds and schemes that can come in. Uh, we finalized that code, we published that in the Gazette. That was also done, um, if I remember right, in February of this year. So all of that, uh, we, we have done all of that. How, how much of a positive compliance do you see from the stock brokering firms and their contribution to ensuring that uh, this, this regulatory framework to all the developments that uh, both sides from the regulator side and uh, the stock market side that you implement? Yeah. So in, the very in, in uh, finalizing these rules, we did not do it on our own. We consulted the industry, we consulted as far as uh, each market intermediary was concerned, the broker community is one of them, one of the main important market intermediaries. We consulted them, it was with their blessings that we finalized those rules. So that one cannot complain, uh, the, the, any one of the market intermediaries cannot complain uh, that those rules are uh, not to their liking mm -hmm. or, or that they are draconian. So um, we have uh, consulted them, so it is with their input that we have finalized them. So that will bring in a, a good governance culture. We have also finalized um, um, uh, uh, gu guidelines for stockbrokers that was done uh, before the passage of the new law. Uh, so, so they are contributing. The market intermediaries are contributing. They are falling in line. They are in com uh, compliance with the rules. So I think that is something uh, good that is happening. Um, you're an investment banker by profession, and we're also talking about uh, crypto, blockchain, and this, this, this is something that Sri Lanka seems like we haven't really made our way into um, officially. But we see a lot of young people who are investing in cryptocurrency. But there was a committee appointed. Uh, so what understanding do you um, have of the um, progress we've made in understanding this? And again, the stock market, what can you do 
uh, what role can the stock market play together with the SEC to uh, bring about that regulatory framework to allow investments here? Sure. So I think first of all you have to look at uh, the regulatory framework is more from a central bank perspective than a capital markets perspective. Uh, unfortunately the country still has a, a closed capital account uh, and I think with uh, the crisis uh, escalating this year, even the limited uh, uh, outflow possibilities that were allowed for Sri Lankans have been now sort of closed off mm -hmm. or withheld. Um, so I can't see in this environment uh, that happening soon in the very, I think Central Bank has already made certain announcements, uh, publications uh, that they are opposed to uh, the crypto framework as it stands now. Uh, and I can see their point because it could open us out to certain risk uh, that we are not used to. Uh, if you just look at volatility of cryptos, we'll tell you when cryptos were trading at 65,000, everyone said it'll go to 100,000 or rather Bitcoin. Uh, and you see it today, you know, it's crashed to 19,000. So I think you have to uh, look at the risk aspects as well and the legality. Um, unfortunately, world over, if you look at only a very few governments uh, have uh, legalized it or accepted it within uh, their framework. A lot of countries, even our nearest neighbor India, uh, have sort of banned crypto. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I think it's something that needs a far more careful consideration, especially looking at the foreign exchange aspects of how it impacts Sri Lanka. Because uh, if the if if the if the uh, argument is that it can attract a lot of capital, I think that's a good thing. But also you have to look at how uh, outflows may happen informally through the sector and how why we need to control those. So I think we probably need to tread a bit carefully in this aspect and I would say give it more time in the very before we really embark upon uh, saying you know uh, crypto but from a technological perspective I think blockchain has a lot to offer. So a lot of people misunderstand crypto with blockchain. So blockchain is the technology that enables crypto. I think the usage of blockchain technology in various aspects of the business and even for the exchange is something we are exploring. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think crypto will probably have to wait till maybe central bank gives the go ahead. To stay with us, we are in conversation with the Chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Viraj Dayaratna, and Chairman of the Colombo Stock Exchange, Devshan Virasekara. And we are talking about Sri Lanka's capital markets challenges and opportunities ahead. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're joining us at Hyde Park on Other Derana 24. And we're talking about Sri Lanka's capital markets and now the opportunities ahead for us in Sri Lanka and the markets. Um, I'd like to talk a little about the uh, stock market and, and the SOE, the state-owned enterprise listing, because this has been a big issue. We saw the president uh, himself talking about this in parliament um, and the need to revive these um, uh, state-owned enterprises uh, that have been making losses. But in terms of um, listing, what is the update so far? So I think um, I mentioned this to you probably at a previous program also. The stock exchange remains ready uh, to list SOEs, right? And I think we've also looked at um, a special framework to enable the listing of SOEs, both in terms of equity as well as debt, uh, because I think the listing, current listing rules may not fit all or some of those SOEs that uh, are uh, looking at listing. Um, so we've, we've, along with the SEC, sort of come up with a, a separate framework that will enable that. The exchange, like I said, remains ready, and it's more from a point of a, a policy decision by government whether they actually use this platform for privatization or choose another path. Um, from, uh, from a perspective of what the public have been uh, asking and what people have been talking about, I think a big concern is that some of those SOEs are a burden on the government and on the nation, mm -hmm. right? Um, that they are not held accountable in terms of uh, their profitability or any other parameter. Uh, a normal listed company would. Um, so in a listed company in the way you have listing rules that you have to comply to. Uh, you have uh, criteria that uh, you need to make sure you meet, uh, especially with regard to your shareholders, 
um, and that I think is what most of our SOEs lack. So um, when you list on the exchange, you will automatically have to comply to these listing rules. You will be accountable to your shareholders. And I think like any private company that's currently sort of listed on the exchange, uh, you would be driven by uh, you know, your ROEs, your profitability, uh, certain profit uh, matrix that you would want to sort of ensure. So I feel that's the best way to achieve some of these uh, parameters for ISOEs is by listing because then that compliance to those listing rules uh, to be being held accountable to your shareholders automatically happens uh, and then that would in turn change those companies governance structures and make sure that they comply with you know good governance uh, practices and principles that most of the private companies adapt um, so i think that's probably the easiest way uh, for the government to choose uh, there are certain perceptions that uh, the exchange doesn't widely represent uh, the Sri Lankan public. And I have to concede to some extent that is true because we have only 900,000 CDS accounts currently that are opened and of which only about uh, 60,000, 65,000 are considered as active accounts. So when you look at it, you think it's only a small segment. But that can change, right? And we are doing everything in our um, uh, power to sort of uh, broad base investor ownership, uh, onboard more Sri Lankans. Um, we were talking about how making um, capital markets a subject for the curriculum so that there is more financial literacy, uh, which I think is one of the biggest causes to hold this expansion back. Uh, and if we do that, the wider public, the Sri Lankan public, can be stakeholders of capital markets. And I think if we achieve that, uh, probably the government also would then have more confidence to list these SOEs because it will be a wider representation. So from an exchange point of view, we are working on, on those initiatives to sort of broad base ownership, have more of Sri Lankan public investing in equi equities, and hopefully that will encourage the government then to choose that platform uh, to list these SOEs and bring about that discipline and structure that I think most of our uh, SOEs daily need. Uh, whether it's broad basing the stock market or uh, bringing in more investors and creating that investor confidence overseas. Uh, I'd like to ask you um, as the SEC chairman, um, when we talk about financial literacy, we still feel that in Sri Lanka there is a minimal, um, th th the understanding on stock market investments, uh, whether it's uh, f among youth or the, um, the, the, the average citizen, why there is this lagging part where the stock market and the SEC has been talking for a long time about um, creating awareness, you had a lot of programs, but yet we feel that um, the, the uh, overall population is not educated on investments and the question about whether an, uh, a middle income earner could build wealth by uh, investing in the stock market or whether you will lose out uh, because many have actually experience that too and that too is probably because of lack of awareness so what programs are you bringing in in the future to address this yeah so creating awareness is a very uh, serious issue and uh, we need to do a lot more uh, in order to create that awareness but on the other hand um, in the very there's a lot that has been done which uh, many would not know mm -hmm. uh, due to the, the restrictions in movement and having mass gatherings we, the CSC and the uh, SEC uh, could not have uh, seminars because the, the CSC and the SEC have been in the habit of um, going to the outstations and having seminars for would-be investors as to how the market operates and mm -hmm. trying to give them that much needed um, uh, knowledge about investing in the capital market. But uh, as an alternative, we have reached out to uh, social media. And uh, you, uh, let me tell you, the SEC has a... Uh, Twitter account, a YouTube channel, the Facebook account. So through all of that, we've uh, done quite a bit, although m maybe many would not know. Uh, and that has been very successful. We, on a daily basis, there is a post on Twitter, something about uh, the capital market. Then um, uh, we, uh, as uh, the chairman of the CSC said, we've reached out to the Ministry of Education and they have undertaken that uh, with the uh, revamping of the school curriculum in 2023, they will include capital markets as a subject, not only at a 
maybe not only at the ordinary level, but uh, from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And we have promised them that we will give them the content and even train some of the teachers. So they have um, uh, promised us that that will be done. And How long will that take? Uh, do you so know? that is at the at the time they will uh, uh, revise the school curriculum. They they told us in 2023, mm -hmm. so which is not too far away. Right. So that's a long term plan. So in the short term, as I said, um, we have these social media campaigns that we do, and then um, uh, there is a, in order to attract family businesses. In order to, it's not only the investors, even the family businesses, the, the, the companies which are not listed, we need to attract them. So th even they have to be um, given that knowledge uh, about the, the, the benefits of listing. We've had an um, uh, investor forum. Uh, there, is a, there was a family business forum that we had. Uh, I think that was in 2021, mm -hmm. uh, where we uh, gave that information out to um, the companies that uh, the potential uh, in order to list. Then uh, the SAC uh, in uh, uh, created uh, actually four produced four short animated videos, which are being uh, relayed, mm -hmm. uh, which gives uh, again information about the capital market, the do's and the don'ts. Uh, so there's a lot uh, that is happening um, uh, in Divari, uh, which people may not be aware. But let me tell you, I think the fact that there have been a lot of youngsters who uh, opened accounts. Uh, the most of the new accounts that were opened have been uh, be, uh, those between the age of 18 and 40. Mm -hmm. So actually, there has been uh, that, we, the, that that can be attributed the initiatives that have that both the SEC and the CSC. Uh, have taken and paid off. That's why I think uh, the, those who are tech savvy have come in, the, the younger generation. Right. So what we need to do now is to tap the others, maybe the over 40s also, uh, to come into the market. That's why I was just discussing with uh, the CSC chairman. Last week, uh, we approved a plan that had been prepared together with the CSC to go once again. Now, now, the, now the situation has improved. We can have mass gatherings. We can go out to the outstations and have programs where we can uh, educate the investors, tell them uh, the investor protection me measures that are in place as to why they should invest, and also about, the, about being, uh, having to be uh, cautious <coughs> in uh, making investments. And patient. And patient, <laughs> that's right. uh, so, so the question again about, um, <coughs> you said most of the uh, new CDS accounts uh, have been opened bit, uh, among youngsters between the ages of 18 and 40. But how much do they have this understanding of being long-term investors? Um, because we've seen many exit enter really soon and exit sooner. So uh, how does the stock market um, look at addressing this? I think in the way you use the correct term, you said be patient. So that is, that is something that they have to bear in mind. Uh, because um, investments in the capital market are ideally long-term or medium-term, short-term, yes. There are those who are day traders. That's not a bad thing. But um, think of the long term. Be patient. Understand what the capital market is all about. Be aware of the dangers, the pitfalls. Uh, not, be, not be too greedy. Not be avaricious. Uh, maybe, maybe gradually improve your investments. Don't, don't invest large sums of money um, in one go. Get used to the market and gradually increase your investments. But what benefits would they have in um, you know, staying, being a long-term investor rather than making a quick buck and uh, exiting? So I think, again, um, you're look, looking at your returns. So obviously, it's your returns. Now, end of the day, you invest in the market for uh, a return, expecting a return. And as long as that return outperforms certain other benchmarks, or if you take even inflation, uh, that's what you're looking at. Now, in the country where we have inflation at 70%, um, you know, interest rates are still lagging behind at 25, 30. But you may have uh, capital market instruments or shares uh, that possibly over a medium term can outdo that inflation. So I think from an investor perspective, each individual needs to profile themselves and see what sort of a mix of a portfolio I should have. So uh, I don't think it's a, a, a blanket long-term investment or a medium term or short term you can have a mix of investments you can part of your portfolio can be long-term shares value shares part could be high yield dividend shares looking at income and part can be uh, more sentiment driven uh, stocks that you're sort of used for day trading 
Uh, but just to come back and say one thing, I think part of our issue as a country has been that, that this capital formation and direction of that capital to sectors of the economy has not happened through our capital markets the way it has happened in other parts of the world. If you look at India or any other country, why are they far more developed? Because the activity, the economic activity that is taking place and capital formation is happening in capital markets. And that capital race is efficiently going to sectors that is most desired. Now, unfortunately, in Sri Lanka, for the last 70 odd years post-independence, we are uh, uh, doing that through our banking sector. So typically, a business raises capital by going to a bank and borrowing. Right, as opposed to capital markets. And that isn't an efficient way to raise capital. So what we are hoping to do with all these initiatives is that create a platform where companies can actually raise capital and then that capital is efficiently directed to sectors at a far cheaper cost than what it would to do a traditional bank financing. So we hope that all these things will pay off in that uh, direction. Uh, we've been talking about challenges in terms of um, improving uh, financial instruments to uh, other challenges. But uh, in terms of uh, increasing corporate listings, are there any challenges for the stock exchange? Yeah, so we had a, we had a good year in 2021, partly because there was an incentive uh, given out by the budget as well, that you had a three year sort of a tax uh, reduction, a 50% reduction on your tax, that um, stimulated companies to come and list. That has been since taken off. Um, so it's now really about valuations, accessing capital. Uh, the biggest hindrance that we've actually had is that the valuations of our market have not really reflected valuations. Companies believe that they should raise capital. Um, so when the market is trading at a low multiple, to list a company with an IPO at a much higher multiple is a bit of a difficult take. So that, I think, has been uh, the biggest uh, drawback for us. However, looking at recent performances, I am confident that these valuations are going to come to a better place over the next maybe 6, 12 months' time. And that would then incentivize new companies so to come and list. We've also, uh, in the very now, catered to different segments of companies. A lot of people had a perception the stock market is, you know, for a big uh, blue chip sort of a company to come and raise capital. It's not the case, right? Uh, we have the main board that has a particular criteria. We have the Dirisavi board that's more a medium sized criteria. And now we have the SME board that is uh, for a smaller company, you know, even to raise a 50 million uh, rupee sort of equity deal size. So I think we've also. Uh, now change the scope of uh, those um, boards so that it caters to a wider audience and hopefully we'll have more uh, Sri Lankan companies coming and making use of that. Um, we uh, also have been talking about demutualization for some time. Uh, will this happen and what will be the outcome? What do you think the perception among investors would be uh, whether that there has been talk whether there will be um, questions of insider trading to other manipulation of stock exchange, uh, stock market as a result. So how, how do you look at all these uh, views? Yeah, so demutualization, the aim is to ensure that there's better governance uh, as far as the stock exchange is concerned rather than a member-driven uh, structure to have a demutualized structure. So un uh, unfortunately, um, uh, in the very the delay, I would, I'm, uh, I'm not very really happy to say this, but it's uh, with the stakeholders. Uh, there was a bill that was prepared, and um, that was, take, uh, I think, uh, it, uh, it was even taken up in parliament, but that did not go through. Then after the present commission, uh, after we took office, we've had uh, several rounds of discussions, so there was, um, uh, there was um, discussion about uh, some of the some of the clauses that were there, some of the sections that were there, then about um, uh, the allocation of uh, shares. All of that was discussed, and uh, well, uh, the, the the broker community, the the member member firms, uh, wanted to look at that and then um, uh, come back to the SEC. Uh, originally, it was proposed that they will come back in April, but then they wanted uh, to further look into the matter, and then I was promised uh, that they will be getting back to the SEC in September, but we are nearing the end of September also. Unfortunately, we haven't heard from them, so I would say the ball is in their court now, and the SEC is ready. We are, we are ready to discuss with them. Maybe. Um, uh, once we are able to agree on the sections, uh, the, the content. But what are their biggest um, challenges and I mean, why do they say they, they 
need more time. Yeah, so so I think uh, they wanted to be a little a little more. Uh, they wanted to be aware of the structure that would be in place post uh, demutualization. Then um, the 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 allocation of. Uh, the, the how how uh, the it, the the shares would be allocated amongst the uh, member firms uh, because we we are to have a capital um, market development fund the allocation between the fund and the member firms whether it should be a 50 50 allocation mm -hmm. uh, or, or whether it should be a 60 40 or 70 30 so that was one of the one of the uh, impediments in in finalizing uh, this uh, piece of legislation but what I told them was, look here, that is something that we can discuss and agree. And ultimately, the decision would lie with the policymakers because uh, it will have to be passed by parliament. So the policymakers will have to uh, agree to that uh, allocation. And uh, that is something that can be discussed and mutually agreed upon. Right. But unfortunately, there is delay, so I, <laughs> I reiterate the board is in their court. If I can uh, also probably respond to that <laughs> as a member firm. Um, so I think. Um, uh, the chairman is right to say that there is a delay. Uh, I think the delay more has been because of a disagreement on the percentage of ownership and how it is structured. The currently, the Karamba Stock Exchange is a company incorporated by guarantee. From a legal perspective, it's owned by the 15 trading members, right? Now, when you demutualize this, uh, there is a particular uh, structure that was proposed, uh, and the brokers counter proposed. Uh, saying, okay, this is the percentage that it, it should be sort of a split on. Uh, we've not come to an agreement on that, so that has been the biggest hindrance, and I think uh, everyone knows that. Uh, the second has been how we actually demutualize, what sort of governance structure is this de demutualized exchange going to have? Uh, what is the composition of the board? Uh, you know, how, how are they uh, going to uh, be appointed? Uh, so for that, what we've done is we've engaged with the IFC in the very. So we've actually got consultants from the IFC, uh, which, have, uh, which has part funded this whole uh, process, and the brokers have uh, essentially coughed up the rest. And we are now almost nearing completion of that assignment. Mm -hmm. So then we will have an IFC sort of recommendation of how demutualization should happen, how that post demutualization exchange should operate. Uh, and we are hopeful that we can meet the deadline we promised to uh, the chairman, and maybe it might be delayed by a week or so, but very soon that we can uh, revert back to the SCC with our sort of recommendations. And then it's about getting agreement of all parties concerned, the government, the SEC, the CSC, and the broking members to agree on this split. So um, you're speaking right now on behalf of? I'm wearing my uh, hat of uh, the broking firms now. <laughs> Well, um, I think our topic today with Sri Lanka's capital markets, challenges and opportunities ahead. We have a very few uh, minutes to wrap up the show. But again, in, talk, in terms of uh, addressing challenges and going forward to um, look at opportunities, especially, as we said, attract global investors, um, what is the outlook for us going forward? I open the question to both parties. Yeah, so I think uh, it's, it's the confidence factor as far as investors are concerned. So I think uh, the measures that are presently in place uh, gives that confidence. Of course, the macroeconomic conditions uh, situation has to improve uh, for, for us to see an improvement in uh, the capital market. Uh, well, as far as um, uh, more companies c uh, listing, there are again, as the CSC chairman said, we have a proper legal framework. We ha there are, uh, the government gave incentives. Of, of course, it was not, it's not continuing um, uh, during the coming year. But um, the, the listing framework uh, has been uh, developed in such a way that they will be able to meet the, channel, meet the requirements. So it's a question of um, uh, the, the, the situation improving. And uh, the message that's the SEC, what we would like to give is uh, come into the uh, market. Uh, we would like to see more listings as well. Going forward. Yeah, I'm, I'm also quite bullish in the very on the market, and I think we've turned a corner uh, as a country. I expect uh, macro stability to prevail uh, and the situation to even improve uh, going forward. Um, so we are confident that uh, these would result in the market dynamics also being positive. Uh, that will hopefully give uh, good earnings to companies, good returns to companies, and 
essentially then investors also making profits out of it. So uh, my appeal really is uh, to uh, the public in general and to the foreign investor community, uh, help us, help Sri Lanka out. We are in a situation where we need investment to this country. So please do come. We've done everything possibly that we could in terms of ensuring a fair, equitable uh, market that is operated for all stakeholders. Um, so please come and invest in Sri Lanka uh, to help this country. That's, that's my final message. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We had with us the Chairman of Securities and Exchange Commission, President's Council, Faraj Dharatna, joining us. Thank you for your time here. Pleasure to be here. Uh, we have also been in conversation tonight with the Chairman of the Colombo Stock Exchange, Dilshan Virasekara, thank you very much for your time here at Hyde Park. Pleasure, Indivari. Thank you. Uh, we've been talking about Sri Lanka's capital markets, uh, the challenges now and opportunities ahead. Thank you for joining in. We'll see you again next week at the same time with yet another discussion. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. <laughs>